Hi guys, I'm the TA of this course, Kibom Han, and I'm here to deliver one of the recent topics about path tracing, which is denoising for path tracing. These are the contents for the lecture. First, we'll review the path tracing, and then we'll go over the denoising methods for path tracing from the classical ones to the recent deep learning based methods. If you have followed the class, you will now be very familiar with this rendering equation. This equation means that the outgoing radiance of certain direction is achieved by integrating the interaction between the incoming ray and the surface from all directions of the hemisphere. However, the integration is too much complex. It cannot be solved analytically. Therefore, we apply an approximation method called a Monte Carlo integration. It approximates the integration by taking average of the results of numer numerous samples. We have learned that the sampling distribution here serves as an important factor in quality of the approximation. We will talk about this issue later on for the Monte Carlo denoising. On top of the Monte Carlo ray tracing, Path tracing works as being the most intuitive and simple, but an efficient method. It only generates one secondary ray, requiring multiple rays to ac accurately estimate the real radiance of the pixel. Also, we have learned the Russian roulette for determination of ray propagation. Unfortunately, there are noises in the result of the path tracing due to the discrepancy of the probability distribution of the real function and the sampling function. Therefore, it requires a lot of rays to get a clean image, which will take too much time and resources. We say this, that the path tracing converges slowly. The Monte Carlo denoising is one of the methods that can remedy the slow convergence of the path tracing. This method aims to reduce rendering time using few rays while maintaining the rendering quality. If you use fewer rays than before and assuming that the denoising methods do not take too much time, it will accelerate the path tracing renders substantially. For the denoising, we can first apply the general denoising methods. However, the problem is quite different. General image denoising deals with random Gaussian noises in the image, which is because of the camera sensors. However, in our case, the noise is because of the probability density function and also the scene geometry, because scenes with high frequency details and complex lighting will have more noises than others. Luckily, in case of path tracing, we can achieve useful information while rendering. The information can be divided into three scales. First is the geometry feature, which contains geometric information such as textures, normals, and depths of the first bounce surface. Second is the sample feature, which contains the whole information of the sample, such as the radiance. The third is a path feature which contains information of each bounce in sequential order. The more deeper a feature we use, the more time and memory it will require, and we can achieve high quality denoising. Well, let's get back to the general denoising. The most general denoising methods, the classical ones, uses weight of the nearby pixels to denoise the center pixel. Weights are also set as kernels. The figure shows the example of an averaging kernel, which smooths the image. There are many strategies to assign appropriate weights for the kernels. These methods have their own logic to define those weights. This is one of the examples of the filtering using kernels for Monte Carlo denoising. It calculates the weight by assuming a noise to be multiple Gaussian noises from the pixel radiance and the auxiliary features. 
However, as traditional methods do, these filtering methods lead to a typical human biases. We can see that the reconstruction results differs by method. Well, in fact, recent deep learning methods remedies the human bias problems. It trains a neural network from a large dataset with about hundreds of scenes to denoise the noisy input. There are various choices of networks while applying convolutional network is the popular choice in the vision field. I assume that all of you are familiar with the concepts of deep learning and convolutional networks as we talked about it in the Zoom session, so I'll move on. From now on, I will introduce three denoising neural networks. Each utilizes one of the three scale of the auxiliary features I've talked before. The first neural network uses the geometric feature for denoising. This kernel predicting convolutional network borrows an idea from the traditional methods based on filtering with kernels. The two-string convolutional networks gets a noisy input and the geometry features and predicts the kernel weights for the nearby pixels. Then the noisy input is denoised by applying the kernel to each pixel. Each stream of the network gets the input image separated with diffuse and specular components. This boosts the denoising performance. The whole idea of separating image and predicting the kernel using the neural network is one of the mainstream of the Monte Carlo denoising. This figure is the visualization of the kernel predicted by the work. The kernel emphasizes the nearby pixels, which are highly correlated to the center pixel. The emphasized pixels are highlighted in the kernel. This kernel predicting convolutional networks show better denoising results compared to the traditional ones thanks to the generalization. These are the further results, and we can see that the denoiser successfully reconstructs some some small details, the specular effects, and also the transient effects. However, if you utilize more specific features than the geometric features, the denoising performance will increase because there will be more information for denoising. For example, this work predicts the sample-wise kernels, which means the Neural network is trained to predict a contribution of each sample to the nearby pixels. Note that the pixel radiance is determined by the average of the sample radiance. Also, in use splatting kernel instead of the gather kernel. Elaborating the difference takes much time, so if you're interested, please look up the paper or ask me through the Q&A board. So, by applying the kernel for each sample, it increased the denoising performance compared to the previous kernel predicting convolutional network. And as this figure shows, utilizing sample features shows better reconstruction for high frequency details and shows less visual artifacts. Beyond using sample features, this recent work utilizes path features to provide richer information for denoising. The manifold learning module embeds the path features into a lower dimensional space for efficient denoising. To do so, it applies contrastive learning. Contrastive learning is one of the deep learning methods which you, don't, you do not need to fully understand for this course. Simply speaking, this learning method helps to repel non-correlated features while attracting similar and highly correlated features. This work uses this method to embed the similar path features closely while repelling the embeddings of the path which are non not correlated. The, correlated. the correlation is determined by pixel radius. Therefore, paths that, are contribu that contribute to similar pixel is embedded similarly while others are embedded contrastively. Well, this shows the result of the embedding. Paths that contribute 
that contribute to the similar pixel radiance is embedded to similar space of the embedding space. These embedded features are then applied to any conventional denoising networks, which means that the embedded features can be applied to previous works we learned, such as, convolu such as kernel predicting convolutional networks or sample-based denoisers. When the embedding is applied to the sample-based denoisers, it boosted the denoising performance. We can see the details of the hat is smoothly reconstructed and also the reflectance are well reconstructed. From now, we've seen three denoising networks, each using one of the auxiliary features, from geometric to sample and path features. Using richer features result to better denoising results. However, it also results in consuming more time and memory footprint. The table shows the time required to denoise a full HD image. We can see that using sample and path features require additional time compared to using geometric information. Currently, it is hard to utilize sample and path features for real-time denoising for path tracing. Before wrapping up, I would like to point out one of the limitations of the deep learning based methods. Deep learning based methods highly depend on the training set. Deep learning based denoisers cannot fully denoise the visual effects that are not used for training. This figure shows one of the examples of the limitation. This particular flame like effect is not used for training. The result of using Deep learning based method is similar to the traditional one, and both show poor quality. To overcome this limitation and any other, there are further advancements. We can apply adversarial training to generate the denoised pixel radiance directly. This might overcome the limitation of the dataset I mentioned before. Also, we can utilize multiple, frame, multiple frames to use temporal information for denoising. This can be helpful for denoising a whole video or an animation. Moreover, denoising can be jointly applied with sampling. Through denoising, we can identify pixels with high noise levels. Then we can shoot more rays for that particular pixel. This method is called an adaptive sampling. So let's wrap up this lecture. I introduced three denoising methods for path tracing based on kernel prediction. Each denoising method uses each scale of auxiliary features. There are further research about Monte Carlo denoising and I wish I had more time to explain deeply to you guys. But due to the limit of time, I just skimmed the surface of it. So if you're more interested in denoising, I post the papers and links in the reference. Thank you for listening to my lecture and good luck with the exam and presentation. Goodbye.